Hi, Nisa Tiras. Today I'm going to show you how to do a tutorial for these woven necklaces. I did make a kit for this at school, which you can pick up. It's the weaving kit. If you did not pick up the kit, you don't need anything fancy. You need a piece of cardboard, tape, scissors, and some yarn. So follow along with us. Okay, artists. So if you went to school to collect uh, any grab bags, one of them was a weaving project of woven necklaces. So this is what I'm going to begin to give you instructions with today. If you did not go to school and get any materials, all you need for this is cardboard, a scissors, and some yarn of any color. So I'm taking just an old box from the post office and I'm going to draw a rectangle on it. This rectangle is four inches <clears throat> across and six inches tall. You don't even have to measure. You can approximate to be about the size of your hand. So you're going to go draw a rectangle on there and then you're going to go cut it out. Okay, so now my cardboard is all cut out. I use a knife to cut it. You can use a knife with your parent or a scissors. And what we're going to do right now is we are going to make some lines on our cardboard where we're going to cut it. So what I did on the top was I made six lines. I just used the centimeters and I measured six centimeters. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you don't have a ruler, you can just eyeball it and make six lines. And you also want to get those lines on the bottom. So I'm going to go one, I'm just measuring where it is on the top and drawing that same line on the bottom. Two, three, four, five, six. After I have those lines in place, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut on those lines. What I'm doing is I'm making a little notch in the cardboard and this is where your string is going to lock into place. Okay, your next step is going to be to design your piece of cardboard. So on my sample here, I actually painted it. Because I had white cardboard here, I'm actually just using markers, which is gonna look just as good. And there's no rules. You can do this however you want. I don't recommend writing anything on it, like any words, because part of it's going to get covered. So you're really just going to make whatever types of designs that appeal to you. So I just did some colored background and now I'm adding details with a Sharpie, but you may color stripes, you can color a rainbow, you can really do anything you want. And what we have just created here is our loom. When you are weaving, the loom is the tool that you use to hold your vertical strings. These are our vertical strings, which are called the warp in place. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna warp the loom. So that means we are going to hook in our first layer of yarn into those notches. Okay, so if you picked up a weaving kit from school, you had a little piece of cardboard with some yarn wrapped around it. And this is our warp thread because this is gonna be our longest thread. So I'm just gonna go unwrap this we're not gonna use all of this. If you're doing it at home, you're just gonna wanna get a piece of yarn that you can wrap around that a whole bunch of times, six times actually. So you can see how I wrap the strings in between the notches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my loom over. I'm gonna take a piece of tape and I'm just gonna tape it to the back. You wanna make sure that yarn is nice and secure and it's not gonna come off. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it to the front and I'm gonna put my yarn, pull it down in between that first notch where I cut it. Put it in my second notch. Now, I'm not wrapping it all the way around the back. I'm just coming around to the next notch. And I'm gonna go up in the notch down, up, down. You want it to be taut. That means it should be pretty tight. You don't want it too tight that it's gonna rip your cardboard. 
but if it's not, if it's too loose, it's not gonna wanna stay in place. So I'm wrapping up, down, up, down. Now my loom is warped. I'm gonna turn it back over. I'm gonna cut off the extra. And I'm gonna tape down that top piece to stay in place. This is the back, so nobody is going to see it. So now we have our loom. We have our warp strings, which are our vertical strings that go up and down. And now we are ready to start our weaving. So now that we have the warp strings on, we have to add the weft strings. The weft strings are the strings that go side to side horizontally. So on my sample over here, I used three different colors for my weft. I used orange, yellow, black. If you got a kit from school, there's a bunch of different colors in it. If you're doing this at home, you can still use the same color that you used for your warp strings and make it all one color. Doesn't really matter. So I'm going to start, I'm going to take my weft string, for me it's red. I'm gonna lift up my edge of my warp string and I'm just gonna tie this in a little knot. And in fact, I'm gonna pull it down so it's closer to the bottom, okay? If you feel more secure, you can make it a double knot. And you can trim the edge off, but you need to be very careful not to cut the warp. If you cut your warp, you kind of have to start over. You cannot fix that. So with weaving, anyone who has had me in sixth grade, you're already an expert on weaving. And weaving is just a very simple pattern where you are putting strings under, over, under, over. So because I tied a knot on this, I'm gonna consider that it's over the blue string. So my next one, I'm gonna put under my blue string, over a blue string, under a blue, over a blue, under a blue. And then I'm gonna pull it across so that it's straight. You don't wanna pull it too tight. If you pull it too tight, you're gonna pull your warp. I call that going on a diet because it's getting skinny and we don't want that. We want our warp to stay nice and straight. So now I'm gonna pick up my string and I'm gonna go back the opposite way. Here, my red string ended under my blue string. So that means now I have to do the opposite. I'm gonna put it over my blue string. Under the next one, over one, under one, over one, under one. I'm gonna pull it. And then you can just use your fingers to push them together. If you pull it, and the whole string comes out, that means you did not do the opposite pattern on this one. So this is what I mean by the opposite pattern. Here, my red string ended under my blue, so when I start a new row, I'm gonna put it over the first blue. Under, over, under, over, under. Pull it straight, push it down. Once again, the red in this case is under my blue, so my next row is gonna start over my blue. Under, over, under, over, under. I am gonna keep doing this under, over, until I only have about this much string left, and then we're gonna tie on a new one. So I'm gonna finish weaving and come back. So now that we have the warp strings on, we have to add the weft strings. The weft strings are the strings that go side to side horizontally. So on my sample over here, I used three different colors for my weft. I used orange, yellow, black. If you got a kit from school, there's a bunch of different colors in it. If you're doing this at home, you can still use the same color that you used for your warp strings and make it all one color. Doesn't really matter. So I'm going to start, I'm going to take my weft string, for me it's red. I'm gonna lift up my edge of my warp string and I'm just gonna tie this in a little knot. And in fact, I'm gonna pull it down so it's closer to the bottom, okay? If you feel more secure, you can make it a double knot.
and you can trim the edge off, but you need to be very careful not to cut the warp. If you cut your warp, you kind of have to start over. You cannot fix that. So with weaving, anyone who has had me in sixth grade, you're already an expert on weaving. And weaving is just a very simple pattern where you are putting strings under, over, under, over. So because I tied a knot on this, I'm going to consider that it's over the blue string. So my next one, I'm going to put under my blue string, over a blue string, under a blue, over a blue, under a blue. And then I'm going to pull across so that it's straight. You don't want to pull it too tight. If you pull it too tight, you're going to pull your warp. I call that going on a diet because it's getting skinny and we don't want that. We want our warp to stay nice and straight. So now I'm going to pick up my string and I'm going to go back the opposite way. Here, my red string ended under my blue string. So that means now I have to do the opposite. I'm going to put it over my blue string. Under the next one. Over one. Under one. Over one. Under one. I'm going to pull it. And then you can just use your fingers to push them together. If you pull it, and the whole string comes out, that means you did not do the opposite pattern on this one. So this is what I mean by the opposite pattern. Here, my red string ended under my blue, so when I start a new row, I'm gonna put it over the first blue. Under, over, under, over, under. Pull it straight, push it down. Once again, the red in this case is under my blue, so my next row is gonna start over my blue. Under, over, under, over, under. I am gonna keep doing this under, over, until I only have about this much string left, and then we're gonna tie on a new one. So I'm gonna finish weaving and come back. Okay, so I just finished weaving most of my red string. I have a little bit left. You need to leave a little bit left to tie on your next color. So to tie it on is very simple. I'm gonna take my next string. I'm gonna hold the two strings right together. I'm going to just tie a knot. And I'm gonna pull so that knot is tight. You can cut off those little edges, but don't get too close to the knot because you don't want to cut off your knot. And then you are just going to keep going as you were. So my red string ended under, so now I'm continuing with the white, but it's going to go over, under one, over one, under one, over one, under one. I'm going to pull it across. And it's just gonna continue to pull that string as if it was one. I'm gonna come back the other way. I ended under my blue. So this time I'm gonna go over, under, over, under one, over one, under one. And I'm gonna pull, oopsies. And I'm just going to push it down. And that knot is just going to get tucked in there. No one's going to even notice it. And I'm going to go again. Over. Under. Over. Under. Over. Under. Pull. Push it down. And I'm going to keep weaving until I'm ready to change my thread again. So see you back in one second. Okay, so now I finished weaving my white. You can see that the white is much bigger than the red. I actually had tied on another white. And now I'm just going to finish by adding my red. To tie on a new string, once again, you're going to hold the old string and the new string together. Just tie them in a knot. Pull tight. I like to open it and pull. You can get rid of the little extra, but do not come too close to the knot. And I'm going to finish up my weaving. So my white ended under the blue. So next row, I'm gonna go over, under, over, under, 
over, under. If you happen to have a needle at home, um, you can put a needle on the end of your string to help you go under and over the thread. It'll make it go a little bit faster, but you do not need it. So I ended under, so I'm gonna go over, under, over, Under. It gets a little bit harder when you get to the top of the loom because the warp strings are a little bit shorter, so it might go a little bit slower, but we're almost done. So I'm going to pull, push it in, and don't worry about that little knot that's sticking up. You can always use a pencil to poke it to the back later. going to go over under, over, under, over, under, pull it across, push it down. Okay, so now I have finished weaving my red. I don't need to go all the way to the top. In fact, it would be very difficult to do that. So I'm just gonna tie my red off here. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna wrap it under that corner warp string pull it through, put, make a knot by putting your string through the loop that you just created. And you're just gonna leave it there and you're just gonna cut off your little edge. And there you have your weaving. So essentially you can leave it just like this, or if you want to turn it into a necklace, you can add more details. So at school, I had a hole punch and I punched two holes at the top to make a necklace. And then I punched some holes at the bottom and I added some more strings with beads. And those beads are in your kit. I'm guessing no one is going to have a hole punch at home. So one great tool is to use a sharp pencil or even a pen. And you're just gonna push that in there and twist it until you have a nice hole. So I'm gonna do that on my other side. Don't go too close to the corner because you don't wanna rip your cardboard. I'm gonna twist it until I get a hole. Now I'm gonna take some of my extra string. I'm gonna, you might wanna get your fingers a little bit wet. Stick that string through the hole. And then you can come around on the other side. You gotta lick it a little bit, get that string. Oh, my string frayed. Sometimes that happens if you pull one piece of the string. So I'm just gonna cut a new edge. I'm gonna lick it a little bit and make this hole a little bit bigger. Push the string through to the other side. Perfect. Tie it right up at the top. And now you have your woven necklace. So any other details you can add to make it your own fringe at the bottom. You could add the beads to the top of the necklace if you wanted. And that is woven necklaces.